Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today, St. John continues to teach us about love, and this, of course, is very important since our perfection consists in that, the perfection of love, the perfection of charity. So St. John first tells us that it is God who takes the initiative in our relationship of knowledge and love of God. It is always God who first knows and loves us. Beloved, we love God because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. Now here he explains how it's not possible to love God and to hate your brother. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Right? The reason why we cannot love God and hate our brother is because the love of God consists in this, that we observe his commandments and he commands us to love our brothers, right? So if we hate our brothers, then we don't love God because we're not doing what he commands us. This is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the begotten by him. All right, so we made the connection between loving God and loving your neighbor. Now, between loving the Father and loving the Son. They both must go together. In this way, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. All right now we see how one cannot love his brother unless he loves God. See, he takes it from the opposite angle. Now, one can certainly love his brother with a natural love without loving God, but he cannot love him with a supernatural God Charity, supernatural charity, if he does not love God, right? The natural love that one has for his neighbor, willing the natural good, right? That he be clothed, fed, you know, that justice be done to him, and these type of things. That is good, it's naturally good if there is not present supernatural charity in the soul. And that natural love is not meritorious, not meritorious for salvation. At most, it can prepare one to receive the gift of supernatural charity, but in and of itself, it's really just a vague shadow of what true supernatural love is. In this way, we know that we love the children of God. That is, we know that we love our neighbor truly with an authentic love when we love God and obey his commandments. Right? Third commandment, Mass on Sunday. Right? Proof that we love God and a necessary condition to truly love our neighbor. Otherwise, we're just simple, natural do-gooders. And I know the phrase is common, well, the idea is common today that in order to get to heaven, you just need to be a good person. That's false. That's wrong. You need to be supernaturally good. As our Lord says, God alone is good. And we need to have God in the soul if we are to be saved and go to heaven. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. All right, notice how the love of God does not consist in sentiments or consolations, but is very concrete and practical. 
The love of God consists in this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. Right? This is explained in different ways. It's not burdensome in the material sense. Right? There are hundreds of laws, the judicial laws and the ceremonial laws, that our Lord has freed us from. We are no longer under that burden. And so, we are now under only the moral law, the Ten Commandments. Much lighter, a much lighter burden than before. But it's also not burdensome because love makes everything light, right? Makes everything easy. As our Lord says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the love which motivates us to observe God, God's commandments makes them light. And also the assistance that we receive by the grace of Christ, right? With his help, they are light and easy. And finally, just considering the reward makes them light and easy. As St. Paul says, the sufferings of this present time are not comparable to the future glory which shall be revealed in us. Although certain things be heavy in themselves, such as to mortify all the lusts, to undergo martyrdom, to suffer all adversity, yet they become light when we consider the example of Christ and his saints and God's promise of heavenly glory. St. Augustine says, if we must needs endure daily torments, if hell itself, for a brief space, like Padre Pio, that we might be worthy to behold Christ coming in glory and to be reckoned in the company of his saints, would it not be worthwhile to suffer anything that is sad, so that we were made partakers of such great good and such great glory? Okay, so it all is incomparable. The small suffering that we can do and endure for the love of God is nothing compared to the glory which awaits us. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world and all its lusts and temptations. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith, our living faith that is a faith vivified by supernatural charity, our faith, our living faith in Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.